morning after the storm and I'm here in Boone's Chapel at the site of the devastation where a tornado came through and destroyed everything in its path. It didn't take a minute for this and it's all gone, it, you know, everything. Henley Holland is the brother of Willard Holland, who was one of the three people killed when a tornado roared through his home. Willard's two adult children, Steve and Cheryl, were also killed. His wife lost a husband and two children. That's, that's bad. How do you live with it? Of the four family members that survived during the terrible storm that destroyed two trailers, we're learning that nine-year-old Faith Holland was discovered alive under her father, Steve, who saved her life during the storm. Damage from the storm in this area can be seen for hundreds of yards. Uprooted trees, down power lines, and twisted metal from the frame of the homes cover the trees, cemetery, and church. The emergency management agency responded to the scene last night and continue to work through the area. Of course, this is the most severe damage that we've experienced. Fatalities in Alabama and other states have made this storm the nation's deadliest storm of the season. Governor Robert Bentley paid visit to the devastated area and to give his condolences to the family. After the deaths and devastation, do you think Alabama was prepared for this type of storm? I do. I, I think that we were as prepared as you could possibly be. In fact, we declared a state of emergency before they really started hitting. Boone's Chapel Baptist Church, just a few yards away, also suffered severe damage from the storm. The chapel and other parts of the church were ripped apart. The pews remain in place as if ready for a Sunday service without a roof and the stained glass windows. It's a building, and our church is stronger than ever, and we'll, we'll be resilient through this. We're just lo we're losing all the way around, losing family, losing church building. You know, the building can be replaced, but my brother and family can't be. You don't never realize just how important they are till a time like this comes. You know, there's no way I can tell them how much I appreciate it. The response from the community has been overwhelming. Dozens of volunteers have been out here overnight helping to clear the debris and comfort the family. Reporting from Boone's Chapel, Alabama, I'm Amanda McKenzie. I'm here at Myers Acres Trailer Park in Eclectic, Alabama, where 11 homes out of 15 homes in this neighborhood were completely destroyed. Now, this is also where four of the deaths out of the six total deaths in Elmore County were reported. I really just don't know how I'm alive right now. It flipped a lot. A lot. Tabitha Marlowe, her mother and boyfriend, decided to ride out the storm, but when the tornado ripped through this neighborhood Wednesday night, it destroyed everything in its path, including their home. She says her family is lucky to be alive. Everything has started shaking, so we got down on the floor, and as soon as we got down, everything turned that way, and it started flipping over and over and over again. <laughs> it felt like it wouldn't stop. All the way across the road, over in the edge of the woods. But across the street from Marlowe's home, it is a different story. Barbara Dreyer learned two family members of hers were killed. She says it was the worst thing that could have ever happened. When the tornado came through, my sister-in-law and her daughter and her two children were in this double wide, and um, it was totally destroyed. And my sister-in-law and her daughter, that's Martha Myers and her daughter, Missy Gant, were killed, and the two children were injured, and they're in... Uh, Children's Hospital in Birmingham. Dreyer says pieces of their home are scattered for hundreds of yards. She says she always thought something like this could never happen to her. I think it's just something that people do that maybe they leave several times, you know, when the storm's coming and nothing happens. So they get relaxed, you know, and say, oh, we'll, we'll be all right, we'll be all right. But this one was not just a storm. Now, cleanup crews, the American Red Cross, and volunteers have been here working throughout the day and are going to continue to work through here for the next few days. Now, the Elmore County Sheriff's Department tells me that if you are in a position where you are unable to stay in your home because it has been damaged or destroyed, you are to seek shelter at the Eclectic High School. Now, back to you. Amanda, uh, give us a sense for how large an area this is that is so devastated. We see it behind you, but do you drive a mile away and everything is fine, or is this a very wide area? It's a very wide area. There are so many homes that appear to be completely leveled. There's nothing left. We drove down the road and continued to see damage to other homes on the roofs and on the power lines. It is not as severe as it is right here, but in this area, it is completely leveled. It, people are calling it ground zero. 
Yes, we can see that very much uh, from behind you, Amanda. Thank you very much for your live report. And we continue our team coverage in Elmore County, where six people died in the storms. CBS 8's Amanda McKenzie joins us now live from Eclectic with more. Amanda. Stephanie, hundreds of volunteers have been working tirelessly through this area. In fact, in this neighborhood, 11 out of the 15 homes here were completely destroyed. In fact, sometimes the damage looks worse than it was yesterday because now all of the wreckage is piled up behind me, if you can see. In fact, the volunteers tell me that although it's going to be a long way until they can start to rebuild, they're right for right now, they're starting the recovery. In the past few days, there have been over 500 volunteers working to sort through the damage, provide food, and offer other services as part of the cleanup process. Barbara Harwell and her family registered to volunteer this morning. I'm willing to do anything that's going to help anybody, you know, talk with them, take care of children, work, tote stuff. I mean, it doesn't matter just as long as it's something to help somebody. Harwell and her family were sent to be part of the cleanup crew in Myers Acres Trailer Park. As she was working to recover personal items, she says she found the mother load. If it were me, the most important thing for me to have right now would not be other material things, but these pictures. I found so many pictures and I'm just thrilled because if it were me, that would be the only thing that I would care about at this point. Everything else can be replaced, but these are memories for our family. <laughs> As crews and volunteers continue to make progress, thousands are still without electricity. Alabama Power estimates that 412,000 people were without power at the peak of the storm. Out-of-state companies have been called in to help restore electricity, and this crew made the trip from Missouri. It's uh, actually a sad sight to see, and the way I understand it, I don't even, this is not even a quarter of what I actually happened. Alabama Power hopes to have power restored next week. Now back to you. Katie, I'm here at the Myers Acres Trailer Park in Eclectic, Alabama, where a dozen homes were destroyed and six deaths were reported. Now, today was all about neighbors helping neighbors. Eclectic is a tight-knit community with about 1,000 people in the population. But today, while I was here, that population easily doubled and tripled in size from volunteers. One thing volunteers say they have enough of is water. So far, 36,000 bottles have been collected, but there have been many more donations that have come in all shapes and sizes. It just started coming and coming and coming, and it got to where we just had to take over and start organizing and getting everything together. This donation center, located at the Old Theater in downtown Eclectic, is overflowing with donations. It started as a local effort where neighbors made donations, but now the word has gotten out, and more and more comes every hour. Gary Wright owns the Old Theater and wanted to put his space to good use. In every tragedy, you try to find a blessing, and I think the blessing that we will find in this tragedy is, is our renewed commitment to, uh, to helping each other. There have been so many donations that the old theater had to expand. Piles of food and clothes sit on top of pool tables next door. No, usually on Saturday afternoons it's full of people shooting pool and having a good time, but we're not interested in any of that right now. But local high school students still found a way to have a good time last night at prom. Prom dresses were donated for the special night, but Leslie Board says they have 100 dresses left over. But now we have tons left over. And so we want to get them sent out to all the other communities that may need the prom dresses. The American Red Cross also set up to offer aid and disaster relief counseling. There is no longer a need for a shelter, but families are still displaced. U.S. Representative Barry Mask says he is not waiting for FEMA and has made it a personal mission to house these families. Yeah, our goal is to try to find all these 12 families some housing by late tomorrow afternoon. People are being so kind, so generous. There's people out here working, working, working. And everybody, thank you. Now, eclectic volunteer organizers tell me that if you would like to get involved, donations can be made to the old theater or you can go to the Hardin building on Kalijah Road. Representatives with the Federal Emergency Management Agency are meeting with storm victims, but officials are warning, watch out for scammers. CBS 8 News reporter Amanda McKenzie joins us with the big story on CBS 8 News at 6. I'm here at the Myers Acres Trailer Park where a dozen homes were destroyed by an EF4 tornado last week. Now FEMA applications are being processed, but we are told it could take seven to ten days until an inspector is coming through the area. Now we are told that storm victims need to be cautious of who they give their personal information out to. You can tell it just, it was trying to take it off the foundation, but actually the way it, that happened 
we did, were able to save some personal things because it imploded instead of exploding. Eloise Josie lost half of her home to the tornado that ripped through Elmore County. She says she was lucky that part of her home survived because she was able to take in her injured neighbors while paramedics were arriving. Josie helped her neighbors and now she, like 115 other people in Elmore County, are waiting for help from FEMA. The most important thing we're trying to do is get out the word to people that before we can really help, they have to register with us. FEMA has representatives in Elmore County ready to help by giving people information on registering, but now storm victims have to take caution. Some people claiming to work for FEMA may be imposters. There were people out here walking up and down the roads with blue shirts on, blue hats, with FEMA in yellow, and they are not FEMA, they're just trying to get people's personal information. Corso says FEMA representatives will never ask for money, social security numbers, or other private documents. My um, concern is that people needing help are vulnerable and we don't want them to be taken advantage of. You've got people over here who have lost everything that don't deal in that realm and it, it makes me hopping mad to think that somebody would come out here and take advantage of people like that. Now, if a FEMA representative comes to your door, they should not be asking for any personal information, and it is always wise to ask for identification first. Now back to you. CBS 8 News reporter Amanda McKenzie joins us live with how volunteers are making a big difference. Amanda? Glenn, I'm here in Eclectic where many homes and lives were lost last week to an EF4 tornado. Here on Prospect Road, more homes were damaged. I spoke to the residents about how they rode out the storm and what they're doing to pick up the pieces with the help of some volunteers that they are calling angels. Mary Jones remembers what it was like riding out the storm in her home. She says it was like a train coming through. My house started shaking all over. I heard the roof when it fell in, glass shattering, and it... It's hard to describe, it really is. You know, it was just absolutely so frightening. And the dogs, they stayed, they wouldn't even get out of the bathtub for a long time afterward, they were so scared. She says she was lucky to survive the storm and is thankful to the Glenwood Baptist Church in Prattville for volunteering at her home. By cleaning up her yard, taking down trees and, and clearing the way so she can get in and out of her driveway safely and just, just making a, giving her a peace of mind by looking out here and seeing these trees gone. Jones says she has angels working for her and the evidence can be seen in her backyard. I wanted to leave a, a remembrance of her, to her of why we were here. We're here because of the cross of Jesus. And uh, I like to say it like this, we're cutting down trees for the cross. What was left of the stump, they carved a cross into it. it I'm sorry, but I did not notice it until yesterday. And when I came out here and saw that, I know the Lord was with all of us during that storm. The homeowners I spoke to said they have filed their claims with FEMA, but for those who haven't, officials at FEMA tell me that they will be opening up tomorrow on Friday at noon at the Hardin Building in Eclectic to help those help register with their FEMA claims and so they can soon start re the rebuilding process. Now back to you. All right, Amanda, thank you very much for that very powerful and personal story there from a Elmore County he joins us now live from Elmore County with more Amanda. Jeff, I'm here in downtown Eclectic where the Federal Emergency Management Agency has opened their doors today to help other homeowners register, register their claims that have suffered the damage from the storm. Just off of Narrow Rock Road, this home stood in the path of an EF4 tornado. 83-year-old Nesby Mask rode out the storm and survived. Her son-in-law says it was divine intervention. And she heard a noise. She used to sit in this green chair behind me. And that was over in the corner of this living room here. And she heard a noise. Uh, she got up on her walker, walked to the door to my right here. And about that time the tornado hit, she backed up against this wall. And about the same time, the uh, chimney fell right on the chair, and I'm sure the chimney probably weighs a couple of three tons. So if, if, if there ever was a divine intervention, that was the case. 
Ansley says the home is a total loss. He filed a claim with FEMA and less than a week later, an inspector arrived. Michaela Curtis of the American Red Cross says it's due to having a working telephone. FEMA needs to be able to contact the individual homeowners. Uh, right now, some phone lines are still down, and it's important that FEMA have alternate phone numbers so that they can contact the people, then set up appointments to come out and assess the damage. But Ansley thinks it is more than that. He thinks FEMA is doing a much better job because they have learned from the past. And I think Katrina woke a lot of people up. So now Ansley says they will continue to pick up the pieces and decide whether or not to rebuild. FEMA is running their operations out of the Hardin building here on 40 Kalijah Road, and this will be open seven days a week from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., and this is for anyone that is wanting to make a claim here in Elmore County. Now, this is also important because representatives are available to help those family members that may have lost some of their personal information in the storm, such as Social Security cards. Back to you. CBS 8 News reporter Amanda McKenzie joins us with the big story on CBS 8 News at 6. Lake Martin at one of the six sites that were devastated by an EF4 tornado. Residents tell me they used to love looking out at the view, but now the water is covered by debris. CBS 8 joined Officer Mark Fuller on his patrol of Lake Martin to survey the damage from the tornado. He says it was a quiet day on the lake with very few boaters, and that is because boaters are being warned about the debris in the water. A lot of the debris is dangerous, uh, it has nails in it, it's a lot of construction debris, pieces of houses. Uh, in some cases you've got uh, roof trusses, you've still got a, a vehicle that we know of that's in the water, several boats and parts of boats. So anytime that any, any boat hits that, it's going to be a problem, uh, especially for people towing skiers and people on inner tubes. So Captain Brooks is encouraging people to stay out of the affected areas and to use extreme caution. It has been two weeks since the storm and the wind and water current has pushed the debris from the destroyed homes into the lake. And this was such a beautiful place and now we don't know if we'll ever get back in the water. Rick Laney and his wife lost their home in the storm, and now pieces of their home are floating in the lake. Well, a lot of the other neighbors are concerned because they're going to run over with their boat and tear their boats up. The tornado roared through Lake Martin like a train on a straight track, slicing through homes like this one. This man was inside when it hit. Are they here right now? It came this way, and it does sound like a train, but it's, it's the monster train. It's the big train. McCoy says pieces of his brother's home are scattered in the trees and throughout the lake, but the cleanup process for some residents is going strong. We start rebuilding because we, we need to start getting new memories, and that's the only way to do it is just to face it, get on with it, and, and uh, just start building again. There were no fatalities here, but there were two deaths reported off the Kalijah Bay area in Elmore County. From Lake Martin, I'm Amanda McKenzie. Now back to you. Hi. CBS 8 News reporter Amanda McKenzie joins us now with the big story on CBS 8 News at 6. It has been two weeks since the devastating tornadoes ripped through Elmore County, and residents in Eclectic tell me they never heard the warnings from the tornado sirens, and they say those sirens mean the difference between life and death. I have never, ever heard a siren since I have lived here. Never. Dana Dunn says she is alive by the grace of God, but her 23-year-old daughter Candace and 5-year-old granddaughter Cammie are now God's angels. I do not want my children, my daughter and my granddaughter to have died in vain. The tornado that came through Eclectic went through the Myers Acres trailer park, destroying their family's home while they were inside. Among the many injuries Dunn has suffered throughout her body, she has a head injury that affects her speech. And she says she does not remember everything from that night, but that the sirens failed her. They need to be more sirens. They are too few and far between um, in rural areas. It, you just cannot hear them. This siren located on Central Road is the closest one to Middle Road, which is three miles away. The EMA tells us that this siren can travel for one to five miles, but due to wind, terrain, and tree cover, it could interfere with the quality of audio being heard. This again is just a piece of the warning system, and, and the sirens are, are critical for that outdoor warning, but again, under those atmospheric conditions, you know, th there is a, a possibility that those sirens may not be heard. But the EMA says they are making improvements to their technology. We're actually uh, working to install a couple of uh, additional warning sirens in heavier populated areas 
uh, of the county now. What I honestly think needs to be done is more of the sirens. I realize that these things are expensive, but there is no amount of money that no mother can put on their child's life. Eric Jones from the EMA tells me there are currently 56 sirens in Elmore County and two more will be added this year.